Hello and welcome back. Uh, today we're going to finish up uh, Chapter 1, the hardware in this computer repair series. So we'll be looking at Chapter 1, uh, Part 4. Uh, instructions stored on the motherboard and other boards. We're talking about the BIOS. Uh, BIOS is the Basic Input and Output System. This is uh, data and instructions uh, stored on ROM chips, which are on the motherboard. ROM BIOS chips are a type of firmware. Now we normally refer to software as instructions that run the hardware. Firmware is like software, but it's in the form of chips, so it's actually embedded in the hardware. Uh, three purposes of the ROM BIOS, this read-only memory BIOS. Uh, system BIOS used to manage simple devices. There's startup BIOS that's used to actually boot or start the computer. It's a set of instructions that are needed for the computer to get started. Uh, CMOS uh, setup used to uh, change motherboard settings. Now CMOS is another acronym for complementary metal oxide semiconductor type of manufacturing process that uh, all these uh, different integrated circuits are developed by. CMOS RAM includes data, time, and uh, port configurations. So this is some information that is uh, in the CMOS RAM. Now flash ROM, that is read-only memory chips uh, that can be overwritten. So we could actually change the ROM since it's in a flash configuration. Here you see a small battery and that battery is being used to support uh, this chip here. Uh, this firmware chip contains flash ROM and CMOS RAM. CMOS RAM is powered uh, by this little coin uh, battery, which is located uh, right here near the chip. So oftentimes we can set a password uh, in this so that nobody can actually access uh, our BIOS but to get that password cleared, all we need to do is either remove this battery, and sometimes there's a little jumper here on the motherboard too that we can use in order to clear the RAM, uh, this ROM BIOS. So if you ever have a password on a computer and you need to clear that password, all we need to do is either remove uh, this little battery or set a jumper that says clear. Advanced Configuration and Power Interface, also known as ACPI. This is a standard specifying a power saving feature. We need power saving features in order to reduce the power that's being used by these computers. Oftentimes people will walk away from computers and just leave them on. And this creates a big power drain on our power grid and Edison has to uh, create more power and that causes pollution to go into the air. So our Air Quality Management or EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, has mandated that computers now have power saving devices. It's good for both you for saving power and money, and it's good for the environment. Um, enables the system to power uh, also by the keyboard. You could actually set a key on the keyboard that could be used to power up the system. Uh, supported by most systems such as Windows XP. Uh, the older version was the Advanced Power Management, APM. That was in the older BIOSes. Plug and play, really important to understand, also known as PNP. This is standard simplifying installation of hardware devices. When you plug in new hardware, PNP comes into play and automatically helps you to configure the device. So PNP BIOS begins this process of configuring the devices when the computer first starts up. PNP compliant operating systems will complete the configuration such as XP. Uh, ESCD, Extended System Configuration Data, Plug and Play BIOS. This is an enhanced version of PNP and stores manual configuration steps. In summary, the computer comprises hardware and software. We can't get that hardware to work without the software. Software is important. Main functions, input, output, and processing and storage. Data is stored in a binary format, ones and zeros, a base two system. This is the only thing a computer understands. It does understand the decimal or our language. Input and output devices are keyboards, mice, printers, monitors, other devices that plug into the back of the computer. Motherboard, the system board, contains the CPU. 
access to the other circuit boards and peripherals. Uh, primary storage, which is your RAM, is volatile or temporary. It goes away if power goes off. Secondary storage, which is non-volatile and permanent, like your hard drive. It uh, stays there even after the power is turned off. Parallel and serial ATA standards enable secondary storage devices, such as the hard drive, to interface with the motherboard. Computer bus uh, system of communication pathways and protocols. We use the buses to move the data. We have to have pathways and protocols in order for this to be accomplished. ROM BIOS helps start the PC, manage simple devices, and change some motherboard settings. Activity. Uh, we're going to do some conversion of megahertz to gigahertz. Uh, we're going to look at uh, 5,000 megahertz. 5,000 megahertz would equal 5 gigahertz. Or we could say 5 billion hertz. So we, instead of having to write out 5 billion hertz, we can, dis we can represent it as either 5,000 megahertz or even shorter yet, 5 gigahertz. So these symbols really help us to be able to take very large numbers and represent them uh, more easily. I also want you to do lab 1.5 and 1.6. 1.5 is comparing the costs. If we're going to build a computer, uh, we need to know what kind of costs we're looking at. So you're going to have to do a little bit of research on the Internet and look at to see what the costs would be of building a new computer. And then finally, I want you to kind of plan what would be an ideal system. Uh, they want you to name the types of components that you think you might need, and you'll see what a final cost is. You're going to have to kind of work on this to uh, figure out what an ideal system is and what is a practical system. And that concludes Chapter 1, uh, Computer Hardware. Uh, next, we'll look at Chapter 2. Well, thank you very much for your time.